everybody, it's Gina Mizell here, also with Danny Moran. We are at Research Stadium following Oregon State's practice on Thursday night, their final practice before their second scrimmage of fall camp. And we're now basically at the midway point of fall camp, which is crazy. The team has gone to Bend for a week, of course, and then come back and been practicing in Corvallis this week. Um, we've obviously had some news already with this camp, with Jake Luton being named the starting quarterback. Marcus McMarion has transferred, but when you kind of maybe look beyond that, what have been kind of your general impressions of what you've seen out of camp so far, whether it was you know here or even what you're curious to see about in the scrimmage on Saturday? Yeah, I, I think the running backs at this point are mm -hmm. probably the, the biggest uh, you know name by position group mm -hmm. with the addition of Thomas Tyner with Ryan Dahl or Tavis Pierce coming back. And then I think Calvin Tyler, a true freshman from Beaumont, Texas, mm -hmm. who has emerged and you know Gary Anderson says is going to play this year, mm -hmm. maybe more special teams given just how deep they are. Um, but I think that's the interesting thing about that position now is that with Luton established as the starter, there's the elements of the passing game potentially, but that running back core seems as you know, basically what it was all cracked up to be at this point. Yeah, you mentioned Calvin Tyler, some other true freshmen that are going to play, at least are in the mix to play this season. Of course, Isaiah Hodgins, the early enrollee freshman receiver, he is going to start. David Morris is in the mix. He's a safety local product. And then uh, Isaiah Dunn at cornerback. And I think that those are kind of the four that are in the mix right now. But certainly some interesting pieces on offense for Luton with um, with the, that receiving core, with Seth Collins coming back from his illness, with Noah Togiai back from his knee injury right. um, if the offensive line which I still think is a little bit of a question mark and we saw some shuffling today Fred Lawino was at tackle Trent Moore was at guard Gus Lavaca at flip side so at least on paper that looks like that still may be in flux at least at this point in fall camp yeah earlier this week I talked to TJ Woods he said really the only person who should feel comfortable about their starting spot is Blake Brandle mm -hmm. at left tackle who's obviously switching from the right side mm -hmm. so uh, the scrimmage I think that that will be a very interesting piece to see because I know with two weeks away being two weeks away from Colorado State mm -hmm. they're going to want to really start to settle on a lot of those position battles uh, Seth Collins appears to look yeah. About 100%, you'd yeah. say, right? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, he kind of has that fiery demeanor that he's always had. But when you look at his on-the-field play, he had a couple nice catches in the scrimmage, and he's obviously flipped to the inside now. He's in the slot and, and again, is slated to start, which we don't even know if he would be able to play at this right. point a couple months ago. So certainly, like I said, that – that receiving core, at least the starting unit, seems to be shaping up. But I talked to Jason Phillips yesterday, and he said that just getting that depth now is a big thing. You know, Trayvon Bradford will be in the mix. Timmy Hernandez will be in the mix. And then beyond that, it's sort of who, who's the next person to fill in. Is it a Tino Allen, another freshman? Is it Aaron Short, a junior college transfer? Is it somebody that we're not even thinking of? So that, that's still a big thing. But let's flip over to the defensive side. We actually talked to defensive players and coaches today. And, of course, the, the big thing is, is the run defense and the right. defensive line. That's the group that Gary Anderson challenged before the season. Um, but there, there are some holes to fill all over the place. So maybe defensively, um, what, what's been the biggest standout to you? I, I think the well, it, part of it is the absence at this point of sure. Craig Evans. Absolutely. Uh, you know, defensive lineman, a transfer from Michigan State, who obviously has a big name. Uh, his eligibility status is a bit uncertain. We talked to Chad Kay today, mm -hmm. uh, who, you know, was runs the defensive line now, took it over from Gary Anderson, says, we don't know when he's going to be here, but our expectation is that he will be here this year. Mm -hmm. So I'll have to kind of stay tuned for that. It may be, you know, kind of another type of a Kyle Pecco <laughs> type, Pecco type saga. <laughs> but once Kyle Pecco came in, his you know, senior year, obviously, he was tremendously effective. Mm -hmm. And it seems like the defensive line from this point, even though Kalani Vakamailalo was really impressed and has mm -hmm. probably been called the best defensive lineman now of that group, he's emerged to that point. There's still a lot of uncertainty that I think, you know, given – the name of a guy like Elu Aiden it hasn't really come along to this point that they, as far as they would have hoped. Yeah, two other names to watch on the defensive line. Titus Falegua, who of course was an outside linebacker last year. He's gotten a lot of positive reviews. I talked to Chad Kay about him uh, today as well and just his playmaking ability and his physicality in, in the run game and just the fact that he's played a couple different positions. He's both a leader because he knows guys both at outside linebacker and on the D-line, but that also kind of helps him see the whole picture of the defense. And then also Paisa Sevea, who is one of those junior college transfers who came in last year. Right. He seems to have taken that next step, um, which a lot of times happens with the junior college players as right. well. And then I think moving to the secondary, mm -hmm. I mean, the big guys, obviously Xavier Crawford mm -hmm. coming back, uh, freshman All-American. We saw he was the last guy on the field mm -hmm. here, uh, which he tends to be. So you have to think, or at least the expectation is that he may even take the jump to the next level. And then 
you know, Dwayne Williams in the mix, probably mm-hmm. best of that nickel spot. But Isaiah Dunn, mm-hmm. as you mentioned before, is probably the biggest name that's stepped up as far as that potential cornerback opposite Xavier Crawford. Yeah, exactly. So a true freshman perhaps in the mix, and that, that's a spot that they need a third person to step up. They would like to play Dwayne Williams at nickel in those in those packages where they go to, to three defensive backs. And if, if they have to play Dwayne Williams on the outside, that means that Bride Uguebu might have to <laughs> back up and play some nickel, which they want him at outside linebacker. Right. So um, we'll, we'll kind of see how that can continues to develop. Again, I know Christian Wallace is a popular name that people have brought up. He is not really in the mix to, to start, at least at this point, and is still learning how to play the position. But yeah, this this Saturday should be interesting as far as seeing what, what they've accomplished from scrimmage one to scrimmage two. Of course, Noah Togiai had a huge performance in that first scrimmage. Jake Luton um, threw some nice balls. So is there anything in particular in, in particular that you will be watching on Saturday? Yeah, probably since we didn't talk about it yet, you know, those linebacker mm-hmm. spots. You know, Bright Aguebu, obvious starter, you know, they want his pass rushing ability. Yeah. Manasse Hungalu, he's the leader of the defense, mm-hmm. you know, a team captain. And then alongside him on the inside, is mm-hmm. it? it's going to be a young guy probably, mm-hmm. you know, at some point, unless it's, you know, Wesley Payne being the exception yeah. uh, inside a, a senior junior college transfer who didn't really play at all last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, could it be a Kessie Ahoy mm-hmm. who uh, is a true freshman and has come in and, and really impressed the people? Or an Andre Hughes-Murray who has moved over from outside. Uh, they're going to need to have some, some sort of complementary piece there mm-hmm. uh, to help run that, that that defense and make it efficient. So I think you know those linebacker battles that are still very much in play, I think are something I'll be paying attention to. Yeah, well, Oregon State is off on Friday and then their scrimmage is on Saturday at noon at Research Stadium. Fans can come watch, so you'll get your first, I guess, glimpse of, of this team if you were not able to go to the scrimmage in Bend last week. But we will, of course, have all kinds of stories, a practice report tonight, later on, and stories. You're working on one on Andre Hughes-Murray. I'm working on one on Austin Hudson that will publish tomorrow. So keep staying uh, on OregonLive.com for all of your Oregon State coverage, and we will see you next